Hey guys, Roger here. So today's video is an interesting one. It's all about the Poco M3 Pro 5G. And in many ways, this handset is very similar to the Redmi Note 10 5G, but with the Poco branding, of course. Now, I've got some mixed feelings about this handset, but just before I get into that, if it's your first time here, please do consider subscribing to the channel. And if you find this video useful, or maybe if you enjoy it, then please do give it a thumbs up. That really does help the video. Okay, with that said then, let's take a look at the Poco M3 Pro 5G. So I can't help it, but at the moment, I'm still very excited about the Poco F3. I think that's a superb handset. I did make a video about that up here and also in the description, so you can check it out if you haven't seen that video. But of course, today, the Poco M3 Pro 5G is the main focus. I think this is priced reasonably well for what you get. Prices are slightly different depending on which country you're in, so I'm really not gonna go into too much detail about the price, but you can find that with a quick Google search. First off then, in the box, you get an 18 watt power adapter for fast charging, USB-C charging cable, some Poco stickers, a little bit of paperwork, SIM ejector tool, and a TPU case. I think all smartphone manufacturers should include some kind of case because as soon as you take this out of the box, you can put it in the case and it gives you some kind of protection. Yes, the case is a little bit flimsy, but it is better than not having one. So as soon as you take this out of the box, you've got some kind of protection for the phone. That's cool. At the top, you get a 3.5 millimeter headphone socket. There's an IR blaster and also a noise canceling mic. On the left hand side is the SIM tray, which supports two 5G SIM cards or one SIM card and a micro SD card. On the right is the volume rocker and the power button with the built in fingerprint reader, which by the way, does seem very reliable and it unlocks the phone quite quickly too. On the bottom is the single lonely speaker so no no dual speakers here that's a bit of a shame also on the bottom though is the usb-c charging port and of course the mic on the back you get this bold design with the poco branding yeah i think that looks quite good i like the way that looks actually uh, and at the top of course is the camera module we'll talk more about the camera in a bit but you really only get one usable camera there, which is the main 48 megapixel camera. However, there is also a two megapixel macro camera and a two megapixel depth sensor as well. And just quickly, while we're talking about the cameras, you also get an eight megapixel front facing camera right in the middle, which does actually take up quite a lot of space, but I think you do get used to that after a while. You get Bluetooth 5.1 support, NFC, face unlocking, fingerprint unlocking, and some of the usual bits you would expect, such as the proximity and ambient light sensors. And there are a few different storage options available as well. So there's four gig of RAM and 64 gig of storage, or six gig of RAM, slightly more, and 128 gig of storage. And do you know something? I think the 64 gig version might actually be enough for some people, especially as you have the micro SD card support. It's good that you've got that. So personally, I would always go for the most storage I can get. However, if you are on a budget and you need to keep the cost down, then 64 gig with an SD card is not a bad way to go, I think. Both of these have DDR4 RAM and UFS 2.2 storage, so read and write speeds will also be pretty decent. So the handset weighs 190 grams, so it's similar to the Poco F3, which is about 196. It's a medium kind of weight, not really that heavy, but kind of what you would expect for a cheaper handset. The display is also very different to the Poco F3. It's an IPS LCD 6.5 inch full HD plus dot display. The display is flat, although the phone does have a curved frame, which makes it nice to hold, but the display itself is flat, which I actually don't mind. You get a 90 hertz refresh rate, which you can also set to 60 if you really want to save on the battery life. And the glass on the front is Corning Gorilla Glass 3. So the display is okay. It's not the best display I've ever seen. Colors are not that amazing either. So it's not that vibrant, but to be honest with you, it's just not bright enough. Inside, it's absolutely fine. You can see the display perfectly well indoors, but as soon as you step outside, especially with sunlight, with lots of sunlight, it becomes very, very hard to see the display. Now, according to the spec sheet, the maximum brightness of the display is 500 nits. Whether it really is, I'm not sure. I don't have a way to test that. But what I can tell you is outside, 
when there's lots of sunlight during the daytime, it's hard to see the display. Let's talk about performance. So the M3 Pro has the MediaTek Dimensity 700 octa-core 5G chip. It's a more budget orientated chip, sure, so it's not going to give you blazingly fast performance. And there will be some games and perhaps some apps and things that are not supported, such as Fortnite. You can't run that on this handset, which is a shame because I do play that. But it's going to run most apps perfectly fine. And of course you get 5G support, which means downloads will be pretty quick as well. So like most Xiaomi handsets at the moment, it's running Android 11 and you've got MIUI 12 on top, which is fine. I like MIUI 12, it's pretty cool. But similar to the Poco F3, there are some things that have been modified slightly for this phone, such as the app drawer. You can't turn that off. Something else that's missing, unfortunately, is those amazing super wallpapers. I think they look really very cool. But unfortunately, you don't get them here. You do with the Poco F3, but you don't with the M3 Pro 5G. I will just say though, although the Super Wallpapers look absolutely awesome in MIUI 12, they do eat away at the battery life very quickly. So, you know, they're not included here. It's a shame, but maybe it's a good thing. Opening apps, switching apps, all of that is smooth and quick. And then when you start gaming and pushing the performance a bit more, well, it does an okay job. Some games might struggle a little bit. The back of the phone does get a little bit warm, especially around the camera module area. But when I say a little bit warm, I mean just a little bit warm. It doesn't get extremely hot. Battery life is quite good as well. And with a refresh rate of 90 Hertz, just because it makes the display, you know, that bit nicer, I've managed to get about seven hours of use on a full charge. That's a mixture of gaming, web browsing, WhatsApp, phone calls, watching videos, you know, the normal stuff that most people do, the normal stuff that I do on a day-to-day -day basis. And I will get about seven hours. And don't forget, that's with the display at 90 Hertz. So that's not bad. So the battery life itself is pretty good. What's very frustrating though, is the charging speed. So yes, it supports 18 watt fast charging, but in 2021, I wouldn't really call it fast charging because it takes about two hours to fully charge. And while that's not awful, I don't think I class that as fast. That is pretty much charging without the fast. Finally then is the camera, and the camera is fairly decent, it's usable. It's not going to be comparable to something a lot more expensive. However, I think the shots that you can get using the main 48 megapixel camera on the Poco M3 Pro 5G, they don't look bad. My personal taste when it comes to photos, well, I do like a bit more saturation, so I tend to turn on AI mode because that helps with that. Of course, you've got HDR as well, which you can turn on. You've got lots of other options, a pro mode as well, and video recording. So there are lots of different things that you can do with the camera, but when it comes down ultimately to the image quality, how good the image actually looks, then I just think everything looks okay. There's nothing here that's incredible, but they're not awful either. So photos and videos with the Poco M3 Pro 5G for me are okay. So the way I feel about the Poco M3 Pro 5G, it's a decent budget handset. It's not bad. It looks pretty good, battery life is good, you get 5G access, that's one of the big things about this handset really. Reasonable-ish main camera and decent performance for the price. There are a few disappointments for me though with this handset. The main two are the display, which just, it's just not bright enough when I'm outside. It's a shame, that's the way it is. The second one is only having one speaker. Now the single speaker on this handset sounds okay, don't get me wrong, it doesn't sound too bad at all. But for me now, I really wish every handset had dual speakers. For me personally, I think that's now a must. So those are my thoughts about the Poco M3 Pro 5G. It's a budget handset. It's not bad, it's got some nice features and I think it will do fairly well. I think people will enjoy the phone. I just wish the screen was a bit brighter and that it had dual speakers. But overall, it's really not that bad. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to subscribe. Leave me a like as well. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.